Here at Kentucky Tennessee Living, we strive to keep this site non-political in nature. All historical events posted are those that change the lives of future generations, as well as we remember those who fought on both sides of the Civil War. All events are posted for the benefit of remembering who we are as the American Appalachian people. Between the years of April 12, 1861 and May 9, 1865, the war between the states raged. The peace of the Appalachian Mountains was broken as brothers took up arms against his brother. Several battles were won and lost in the area of Letcher County and we will try to cover as many of them as possible. Our story today begins with General Humphrey Marshall. Humphrey Marshall was born on July 13, 1812 in Frankfort, Kentucky to John J. and Anna Burney Marshall. Humphrey's father, John J., was a legislator, judge, and law reporter. Humphrey was first cousins to William and David Burney, who both served as generals on the Union side of the war. Their father, James G. Burney, Humphrey's uncle, was a well-known abolitionist. He had another cousin that served as lieutenant governor of Michigan and later minister to the Netherlands, whose name was James M. Burney. His grandfather's name was also Humphrey and served as a United States Senator from the state of Kentucky. The older Humphrey was the first cousin to Chief Justice John Marshall. Humphrey the Younger was a 1832 West Point graduate from the United States Military Academy in New York. He would graduate as the 42nd in his graduating class. He served as a bereft second lieutenant in the Mountain Rangers and Dragoons. Marshall would fight in the Black Hawk War during this time. After this conflict in April 1833, Marshall resigned from the Army to study law. Later that same year, the state of Kentucky admitted Marshall into the bar and he practiced law in Frankfort, Kentucky. Two years later, in 1835, Marshall would move to Louisville, Kentucky. In 1836, Humphrey Marshall joined the militia and became a captain. During this time, Marshall and a company of volunteers marched to defend the state of Texas and the frontier against the Native Americans. His force disbanded, however, when General Sam Houston had a victory at San Jacinto. By 1838, Marshall was a major. In 1841, he became a lieutenant colonel. In 1846, Marshall became a colonel of the 1st Kentucky Cavalry during the Mexican-American War. He fought in the Battle of Buena Vista with Zachary Taylor's Army of Occupation. Marshall returned home after the Mexican-American War and became a farmer in Henry County, Kentucky. On March 4, 1849, Marshall was elected from the Kentucky 7th District as a Whig to the 31st and 32nd Congresses. During his time in Congress, he supported Henry Clay's Compromise of 1850. He resigned from his Congress position on August 4, 1852. From 1852 to 1854, Marshall was appointed as a United States Diplomat Commissioner to China. When this term was over, he returned to the state of Kentucky where he was again elected to the 34th and 35th Congresses. Even though he was renominated for a fifth term in office, he turned the offer down and refused to run. In 1856, he became a member of the American Political Party of New York City, and he was instrumental in removing all secrecy in the political organization. Marshall was well known for being a moderate in his political views. He supported John C. Breckinridge for president in 1860. He also advocated and worked for the state of Kentucky to remain neutral. This effort failed when Union troops occupied the state of Kentucky. Marshall felt that this action was coercion. Enlisting with the rank of Brigadier General, Marshall joined the Confederacy and aided in recruitment. He was stationed in West Virginia but saw very little combat. In January 1862, General Humphrey Marshall and his troops were stationed in Paintsville, Kentucky. There, he would be confronted in battle by General and future President James A. Garfield. The fighting did not go well as Garfield's Federal Cavalry chased off the cavalry from Marshall's troops to the forks of Middle Creek. 
This was just two miles from Prestonsburg, Kentucky. On January the 9th, the two armies met again and Marshall again withdrew his troops a day after fighting. General Humphrey Marshall had his troops vacate their trenches at Hager Hill and marched his four regiments up the Prestonsburg Road to the mouth of Abbott Creek, which intersected with the Pound Gap Road at that point. Marshall used this point to station his troops. Because Garfield was pursuing him from Paintsville, Marshall had received intelligence that Craner's 40th Ohio was moving east from Licking Station to reinforce Garfield. He was in a perfect position to intercept either of these forces before they had a chance to combine against him. This area also afforded Marshall a route out of the area if he won or lost the battle and had to do a hasty retreat. As it turned out, it was a retreat. He retreated his forces through modern-day Goodloe and Pyramid over Brushy Mountain and toward Brush Creek to Hueysville. He then established a new camp at Joseph Gearhart's farm for a week. According to tradition, one unnamed Confederate soldier died and was buried at the Gearhart Cemetery. While other soldiers burned fence posts to keep warm, Marshall then moved his troops to John Martin's farm for rest and a warm welcome. Marshall was able to obtain the victory at the Princeton Courthouse Battle. This would be a minor battle in the war and was fought on May 15th through the 17th, 1862 in Mercer County, Virginia. The battle would see a win for Marshall against Brigadier General John Dolson Cox, who was trying to threaten the East Tennessee and Virginia railroads. Even though Marshall had a victory in this battle, he became frustrated because he was not allowed to have a bigger assignment in the war. In June 1862, Marshall briefly handed over his resignation. In the fall of 1862, Marshall returned to battle and was part of the Braxton Briggs Kentucky operations. After a short time in June 1863, Marshall then resigned his commission again and moved to Richmond, Virginia, where he practiced law. While in Richmond, Marshall was elected to Second Confederate Congress in November of 1863. He would represent the Kentucky's 8th District. When the Confederacy collapsed and the Second Confederate Congress was disbanded, Marshall briefly fled to Texas for safety. When the Civil War was finally over, Marshall moved to New Orleans, Louisiana. While there, President Andrew Jackson restored Marshall to citizen of the United States in December 1867. Marshall then returned to Louisville, Kentucky and began to practice law again. There he would stay until his death on March 28, 1872. He would be buried at Frankfort Cemetery in Franklin County, Kentucky. Thank you for watching our video about General Humphrey Marshall. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring you the history of the Appalachian Mountains. Please like, subscribe, and share below. Also hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And once again, be sure to leave us a hey y'all in the comment section below. Thank you for continuing to support us and watch our videos.